This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hello, hi, how you doing? Gordo the Techs are here. Welcome to another thrilling and exciting off-the-scale episode of Hibachi Talk. Here with my good old buddy, Andrew, the security guy. Hey, everybody. <coughs> Aloha. And, uh, how you doing? Nice to see you uh, yeah, still man. in town and not traveling. Right on. We have a wonderful, good lovely to be guest here for today. The holidays. Debbie Kim Morikawa. We, uh, we have a long history of working together. Welcome, and, uh, Debbie. We're going to talk Thank about you. the gym guys and so on. So grab a libation, pull up a chair, sit down. And remember when Hibachi talks, people listen. Oh. I like that new. Wow. Tag you didn't pick that yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. That you. one may never go away. May never, never right go on. away. So I'm going to do a little quick cryptocurrency update because okay. we do a little quick on that one. So um, today is, uh, is hitting up against $14,000 for insane. a Bitcoin as of, as of this conversation. It's insane. Yeah. Um, $367 billion market cap in cryptocurrencies wow. right now. It is just, it's, it's going bonkers. I'm going to tell people to start watching out for something new. I'm going to start giving you some uh, information on um, uh, new ways of mining uh, cryptocurrencies. So, so watch for that. I will, uh, I will be giving an update on that in a, in a future a episode. A future episode? Future episode. That's the hook. That's you got to come hook. back to get, you gotta, you gotta you gotta, get the You got to come back. That, that $12 that you gave me like a couple months ago, remember yeah. on that we did on the show? This morning I, look, I looked, it was 60, it's worth $66. Yeah. Wow. And it was only a couple months ago. He, he transferred it into my, my, I have like a Bitcoin thing. So, so it's gone up almost 6X. 6X in the, in the Just since period of time. in eight weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you wish all your stocks performed that well? <laughs> I know. Well, we're going to learn about master nodes in the near future. All right. Anyway. Anyway, so Debbie, it's so great to have you on the show. Yeah, well, welcome. You, you and I were in the Hanneman administration together, yes. and so and um, you've always been involved in community um, work and helping the community the, since the day I've known you, and which is quite some time. Um, but st but still, the, our viewers don't know. So get a little background on yourself. Where did you go to school? Where did you grow up? Well, I grew up in Hawaii in Ainahaina, and I went to school. Um, college at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, where I got my degree in occupational therapy. Okay. And so that's where I started out. I actually started out as a therapist. I practiced for, I would say, maybe five or six years in the field, and then I transitioned to long-term care. And in that arena, I worked with seniors a lot in nursing facilities, assisted living, daycare programs, all the different areas that seniors um, are found is where I was working. Mm. So that's where I really developed all of the skills that I'm starting to apply now. It's kind of like I've gone back to my roots. Um, in between, I did nonprofit work. So I actually was the executive director at IHS, the Institute for Human Services, oh, wow. yeah. um, following um, pretty much Claude Dutille. Um, he was, after he left, I was the first executive director. Okay. Did that for four and a half years. So, so, but then, was that before or after the Hanneman administration? That was way before. That was way before. That's when I first mo mo met Mufi, actually, w through the Pacific Century Fellows oh, Program. Oh, you, you were part of that program? Yes, I was wow. in the inaugural oh. class, the very wow. first class with David Ige. Wow. With David <laughs> Ige. Well, you have some, you rub elbows with the elite. Man, I'll tell you. <laughs> then you did, you did um, how many years? Was it six or eight years in the Hanneman administration? Well, see, he was there six, so. Yeah, I only stayed six. Okay, and and so you did that six, that six years there, and you were the director of? Department of Community, community Services. Services. Again, involved in the community, involved in, in taking care of people here in Hawaii. So you have, you have a very nice, uh, you know, a warm feeling background and so on. So yeah. now you're going, but you, this is this is quite the branch out now. Yeah, this is private. This is private, <laughs> the gym guys, right? This is for a for-profit entity and it's called the gym guys. So who and what are the gym guys? Well, gym guys is actually a national franchise. It's the first franchise of its kind that does in-home personal training. So we're mobile. Um, we come to you in, many times in a van uh, where we have all of the equipment, we have all everything that you need to set up a workout in your own home, in your office, whatever space that you prefer. And the convenience factor is what makes us unique in that most people today don't have enough time. You know, you're busy, you don't want to go to the gym because you got to get your ass, you got to get in your car. We bring it right to you. And the workout takes only an hour. And we use a really good formula. We do functional strength training, core conditioning, as well as 
putting it into an interval format. So we've all heard about high intensity interval training, right? right? right. Mm -hmm. yep. right. Um, it's one of the most efficient ways to get a workout where you're burning calories, you're getting cardiovascular conditioning, plus you're strengthening. So we do it in that format and it's doable. You know, a lot of times, especially if you're not really a gym person, so the person who's gonna go to the gym and you know, really psyched, they like getting up, getting out there, we were, strongly recommend that they go to the gym, continue to go to the gym. What we bring though is the expertise to the home for that person that says, you know what, I really don't want to go to the gym. Well, I don't have time to go to the gym. The other thing that we bring to the table, which I think is really critical, and that's what I think sets us apart in many ways, is that we don't think of what we do as just exercise. Mm. You know, a lot of times you think getting fit, mm. working out, it's all about exercise, building muscle, building strength. For us, it's really about feeling better and functioning better. Because what happens mm -hmm. when you're working, as you get older, you just, I'm looking at your screens right here. What do we do? We work at our screens. Yeah. Yeah. What sure. do we do when we're looking at our smartphones? Our heads are down. When we eat, we're eating over the table. When we're driving even, if mm -hmm. you notice, people drive like this. Everything is rounded forward. And when that happens, your chest muscles tighten up, your shoulders round forward, your head starts to go forward, and you can start to develop permanent changes in your spine. Your head is pretty heavy. Mm. So as your head starts to come forward, it's now pulling everything down. All of those back muscles are being overstretched and your brain's saying, come back, come back. So at the end of the day, you're sore, right? Your muscles are starting to spasm. So what we do with our exercises is we make sure that everything is in alignment. So it's not just about the workout, is it's your ears thing. over your shoulders, over your hips, are you pulling in your stomach, activating your core, making sure that whatever you're doing, you're staying in that correct posture and alignment. And mm. when you're doing the exercises, not only does the form look good, but are you feeling the right muscle groups being activated? Hmm. Well, I was told once I to, uh, suggested how I could lose 40 pounds of ugly fat. They said, cut off my head. So that, you know, that nice. That, wow. <laughs> that, was, that, that was something that someone said to me one day. So, That's but who's your, target, I know. <laughs> so who's your target market? Like, you, you know, this, this is, is it, um, is it uh, the millennials? Is it seniors? Is it children? I mean, how well, We can that? really serve anyone. And we've had the range from uh, a high school student in all the way up to we have a 98 year old. But actually, the people that I'm really trying to focus on who I think can benefit the most from our services are the seniors. Because many times, and we're thinking of people like our parents' age, mm -hmm. um, or even some or, of our friends. My age. <laughs> some of my friends you know, are in their 70s and 80s. What happens is, as you get older, you lose 1% muscle mass. After you hit the age of 50, every year, if you don't do anything other than your normal activities, you're gonna lose 1% of muscle mass every year. Mm. There's one study I looked at that said in 10 years, you lose 15%, which is even more. So you're losing it if you don't use it. And when something happens to you, I mean, you know when you've been out with the flu, 24 hours in bed, you get up and you're tired. Your mm. body takes more to and just walk around. Just, yeah. Well, if you're in bed as a senior, your muscles get very, very weak quickly and mm. getting up out of that bed gets more difficult. And typically you think, oh, there's nothing they can do. That's just part of aging. So do you um, do, you, um, do uh, rehab, so I'm, like PT? So if I went to, um, like I've had knee surgeries and so on, and then I have to go do my PTs afterwards and all that, that stuff. So are you guys certified in, uh, to no. provide those services? So rehab no. and what we do in personal training is very different okay um, or i shouldn't say very different it is different in that the way i look at physical therapy is you do have a skilled trained many times a doctorate degree mm -hmm. um, and you're specifically looking at progressing them through different functional levels so insurance they're guided by insurance right. as well as a doctor's prescription right so mm -hmm. pretty much you know, you, you have to be making progress for the insurance company to continue paying you. Makes sense. So once you start to plateau, meaning, okay, your progress is much slower, you're still not back to where you used to be before the injury, but you don't qualify for therapy anymore because insurance is saying, hey, you're not going to progress, so we're cutting off, the, you plateau, mm -hmm. we're cutting off your insurance wow. for therapy. 
then there's no place. And this for is where then go. you could you could exactly. your, your organization you know can be inserted in and continue on with that program right. and take it to the because we don't care whether or not you take two weeks four weeks before you get to the next level. For us, it's all about making sure that you're functional. And the other thing that we focus on a lot is what we refer to as more functional fitness. We're not so much concerned about how many weights can you lift, you know, how many pounds, how many repetitions, for how long. What we're concerned about is, okay, can you reach down and pick up something off the ground? Right. Can you reach up into your cabinets? Are you able to get up out of a chair? You know, those are the kinds of things that as you get older, are really important in maintaining your independence. And many times we lose the strength in our lower legs. And what was fascinating to me is I've been working with Palolo Chinese Home, mm. going in there, looking at their daycare programs, talking to them about wow. what they're doing in their skilled nursing facility or their intermediate care um, facility area. And I was evaluating this one woman who they said she loves to walk. And sure enough, she pops right up and she walks around with her walker. But when I asked her, when I was just standing with her, can you lift up one leg, she couldn't. And then she asked me, can, can I use my walker? So I said, sure, I gave her the walker, and boom, her leg came right up. And I said, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. And what was happening was, she was using all of her upper body to propel herself. So basically very little leg strength, to, so she didn't have that. So she really needed to strengthen her lower extremities. And if she doesn't do it soon, she can start to decrease. And we've seen strength. people like that. We know we've. I have friends that have. I've watched them deteriorate over this past couple of years, as a matter of fact. And um, but, the, but they've never been gym rats, or they've never been the type to go running or exercise and whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm just watching them. Just they're now got walkers. They now they now have canes, um, and they've just kind of made up their mind that that's what it's going to be. And I keep saying to them, you know, I don't think you have to be like that. I think right. you can, there are ways to get yourself re-strengthened. Um, I think one of them is going to get a hip replacement in a couple of weeks. Wow. And I said, so after this hip replacement, are you going to start to get, you know, exercise and do things like this? I don't think he will. I think he's just going to continue to just sit, and lounge around. Okay. Well, you know, you get physical therapy, and then once you plateau, then the therapist says, okay, these are your home exercises. Well, we know, even for myself, I don't always do those home exercises. And then, are you doing it correctly? And remember, I started out by saying one of the unique things about us is we don't just look at form. We ask and get feedback as to what muscle groups are you using. And the perfect example for that is a squat. You've all heard of squats, sure. right? That's probably one of the best core exercises that you can do, but most people aren't doing it properly. Right, that's a tough... Their form can look perfect. In fact, when I started doing it, because I didn't know about exercise until I started doing this, uh, OTs tend to work more with upper extremities. So the trainer said, do a squat. And they explained what, they need, what I needed to do. You need the weight on your heels, now go down. So I did it. And two people, two trainers actually said, you do a really great squat, you've got perfect form. And then I watched a YouTube video and they told me, okay, the best way to tell someone to do a squat is not bend your knees, is start pushing your butt backwards towards the wall, and then, and this is what I do, I tell them, and now as you go down, now you can lower your knees. It takes all the strain off of your knees. As you get older, you hear of a lot of people saying, oh, but that hurts my knees. Yeah. Well, if you're doing it properly, it's not going to affect your knees. Well, as you get older, it gets even, t and I can tell you, uh, based oh, on you experience, work your way as you get closer to the ground, <laughs> it's not that easy anymore. It's hard. You know, it's, right. we, we have a tendency to not bend over correctly. How many people I've known, including myself, that's throwing your back out, just picking up a pencil because you bent the wrong way? Um, yeah, just the, all of those kinds of things. And, and, and you put on a few pounds, which I've done. And so you're carrying those around uh, as well. So there's just there's a whole number of different things that we could just do in our daily lives. Exactly, and you're you're hitting on a point that I started on where we are trying to teach you how to move correctly all the time. Mm. So when I mm. talk to you about posture, I, everybody kind of starts to straighten up. Yeah, they go, you know? oh. oh yeah. But 
that means that, okay, you weren't in good posture, yeah. but you didn't even notice it, right? right? So what we do with our exercises is we're constantly cueing people to p open up your shoulders, chin tuck back, make sure you have that slight, slight arch, not overextended or rounded, but you want that neutral spine. And in that position, you do your exercises. So you're constantly reinforcing the postural muscles to hold you straight. So that when you do go to sneeze or you get up you know, suddenly without thinking about it, your body automatically moves the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that doesn't happen to us in everyday life. When you have to go to lift something heavy, people say, oh, well, I always you know, lift with my See, legs, yeah. put the weight close to my body, and you do it correctly. See them bending over. Okay, hold on one sec. So we, I told you this goes fast. Yes. So we got another, we got to uh, take a one minute break. Angus has some gadget he wants to show. Oh, cool. Something to do with fitness. So we keep, he keeps it thematic. So we're going to take a one minute break. This is Think Tech Hawaii, Hibachi Talk. Go to the Texar. Debbie Kim Morikawa. Gym guys. Talk soon. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. It sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search DiveHeart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. Match day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hey everybody, welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Hibachi Talk. We got Debbie with the gym guys, but first, we got Angus with a gadget. Angus, what's up, buddy? How you doing, there, lad? Good to see you, hey, man. Hey, Debbie, you're looking really good there, lassie. Hey, Angus, <laughs> nice to meet you. Oh, nice to meet you, too. High five. High five. Awesome. <laughs> I, like, I like it when they interact with you here. Sometimes they get a wee bit scared. I don't blame them. <laughs> hey, you, know, you know, I go to the gym all the time. Can you tell about my muscles? Look at that. They're just oh, pretty cool. there. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> so I'm at the gym, but let me show you what, you know, what, what Gordon did to me. He, he put all this stuff on my weights, and I got a picture of it. This is what he did. This is how he motivates me to do my gym. So this is what I have to do. This is what I, when I move around <laughs> in the gym, I got these are all my weights. Very weak, also weak, still weak, not strong. Not well, strong, no. Still not strong as <laughs> <Please. in> police. <laughs> That's how he motivates me to get my exercises done. So wow. I'm sure you do a lot better job than that. Oh, we'll do a fantastic job. Just come give me a call and we'll get you top shape. Awesome. We can do my legs today because I didn't have legs. It was too cheap to buy them for me. <laughs> anyway, this is Angus McTech. And I can say it in every segment. Let your wing game free where you be. Hello. Ha. Nice. There's Angus with some... Less than motivational motivation for your for your gym stack. You know, I don't think we want to say weak, weaker, weakest, <laughs> but you know, it's good stuff anyway. He's always got a good gadget. Thanks a lot. So, Gordo, what's up, man? So anyway, so Debbie, so we've, we've um, you've, you've talked about the core strength and all the things that you do, but let's talk a little bit about gym guys. Like, how long has this been around? I mean, it, you're a relatively new startup, right? This has been yes, a year, so six months? I just started taking clients in June of this year. Okay. Uh -huh. The franchise started in 2014. Okay. And the owner of the franchise actually started his, the whole concept in 2008. Okay. And so it's, it, the concept has been around, but he fr started franchise. So it's a very young franchise. So you're, uh, it says um, Jim Guy's Urban Honolulu. So yes. if you go to your website, you, you, you'll see that there. Um, so, yeah, so what's the range of services going to work? Do you go all over the island? or Well, what's Urban your? Honolulu really covers just the urban core okay. for me. However, because of the requests and um, wanting to be able to meet people's needs, we do go out to Hawaii Kai. We have gone as far as Pearl City, okay. and we have started going into Kaneohe. Good deal. So, you got, so, you so it's have, going to be dependent on my trainer's availability. Yeah, on the schedule, right? Yeah. So right. How do you, is the schedule, you can do it right off the internet, right off your website? You can request a, a, an appointment? We haven't or? done that yet just okay. because right now I'm still building up, but there is that capacity down the road. Okay. So how awesome. many trainers do you have right now? Right now I have two trainers. Two trainers. Wow, that's awesome. And, and so two trainers, are you seven days a week? Yes, we are, and the hours are a little... Um, Squirrely? <laughs> well, so 
We technically start at 4 in the morning okay. and go till 11 at night. Wow. Yeah. That's oh. a long day. Monday through Friday. And then Saturdays and Sundays, we're open from 6 a.m. till 6 p.m. Now, it's going to also be subject to the trainer's availability, right. whether or not they also work on holidays. And that's all up to the trainer. So what's a typical Sh session? Would it be like three days a week, four days a week? You know, how do we those usually recommend starting out with at least two to three sessions a week, okay. ex especially just starting out. And um, they're hour-long sessions. And they really get you going. So, and, and like I said, with the high intensity interval training, you get actually um, metabolic activation for 24 to 48 hours after the workout. After the workout. Yeah. So that's pretty impressive. Yeah. So, so um, then how does someone go about um, uh, signing up or booking an appointment or any of those kinds of things? So they just give me a call and I can schedule them for their free initial assessment. Ooh. Free yeah. initial assessment. That's the what I like. Initial like. assessment <laughs> is, um, com consists of body composition. So we take your body fat, your muscle mass, your visceral fat, which is the fat that mm. is around All your, your organs. Yeah. Around your sure. organs, yeah. Quite a bit in my case. Yeah. So yeah, that's a bit. number that we try <laughs> to watch because that's an indicator that you're at risk for metabolic disease like diabetes, cardiovascular mm. disease. High blood pressure. Uh, so um, we do the body composition. We do a health screening just to make sure that you're safe to exercise. And then we do like a mini fitness uh, assessment. So we take you through a, warm -up, a stretch warm up and a little routine so that again, we can see what your fitness level is. And you also get a sense of what our workouts are like and then mm -hmm. you can decide whether or not you want to join us. So wow. then that gives you a baseline though. That the good thing is yes. I'm thinking here is that once you've done that, you've said, okay, now here's your baseline. And then as we progress over the months, we'll be able to measure your progress based on where you were with the baseline. Right. And we see people feeling a difference, um, you know, within just a couple of weeks if you're younger. If you're older, sometimes just even one session makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Well, you'll sleep better. And well, all your, and your metabolism starts to run again. You know, you get, people get sluggish, right? Because if, if you can't train for whatever reason, you, you, you'll start to feel bad. If you're used to training, yeah. you know you know how that feels. And if, if you're not used to it, you don't even know how bad you feel. It's part of the problem. So once you get them going, uh, they're like, wow, I feel so much more. They think they'll be tired from the workout, but they actually have more energy. And that's right. the, one of those things that those people don't hormones. understand. Yeah, sure. is that you end up sleeping better, you wake Wake up more stress-free. Right. Um, just, there's just a constant uh, uh, help. I mean, I think I'd be a lot worse if I didn't go to the gym three times a week. But yeah. you know, uh, and you're doing it seven days a week. Yeah, the, you're constantly I mean the, the at it. The focus on wellness is the thing, you know, because it's diet, it's r things you mentioned, resting, right, and and exercises. I think a big component of that, and you know, an, an hour a day is awesome. If people can get an, an hour a day, every other day, something like that, and keep that burn, because you do get the benefit over time. Like you, right. once you activate your, you know, that especially with the high intensity cardiovascular, right. So you're gonna you're gonna go up, and your body's gonna keep burning at a little higher level for you know 24, 48 hours, depending on everybody's a little different, right? Mm -hmm. But if you keep doing it every other day, it just stays higher. So then you start burning right. more calories. So you actually got a met metabolic burn going after a while. And you know, it can take a while to get it activated again, but that's the, the thing, state you want to be in. And the other thing that happens is when you do exercises on your own, many times you go through the same routines and you stay with that's them. That's me, I cheat all the time. And <laughs> what happens is that your muscles start to adapt. So it takes more to get right. the same benefit. With the gym guys routine, basically we're constantly changing the workout routine for the younger adults because you don't want those muscles to adapt. You constantly want to challenge the body and constantly getting that improvement. Yeah, adaptation is sort of the enemy, right? Like you, you need the, you, the point is to adapt, but once you've adapted, you've got to change uh, yeah. quick. The same and, routine. And your body's right. smart. The same routine yeah. and you're saying, wait, I'm not, get, I'm not getting yeah. any progress here. Yeah, right. you, like she talked about plateauing and it happens pretty quick, four to six weeks if you're just doing the same thing, yeah. typically, you know, you're gonna. Now that's different for our seniors. For our seniors, we do try to keep it more similar over time and do gradual changes mm -hmm. because they have a longer ways to go sometimes mm. to get to where they're going to plateau. Right, right. But so, Define senior. <laughs> so, okay, so that's a good question. Yeah. how you I feel. Know, right? That is a really good <laughs> question. Yeah, because, because for us, years, seniors start at maybe 70, 75. Oh, good. 
Yeah. <laughs> I still got time. <laughs> and then I, I have 80-year-olds oh, that you know, for a need a lot of work, and then 80-year-olds that are playing singles tennis. Oh, yeah. So, you know, it, it's... Pickleball. It's we see them playing pickleball. Oh, pickleball. Uh, That's a big one now. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's all relative. And mm -hmm. That's why it is. The it's whole you're reason you're, you're doing this is so that as you get older, you can maintain your bone density and muscle strength so that it's not so hard to build it back. Because mm -hmm. you are going to, I mean, physiologically, you're going to lose it every year. And it's all the things you need to do in weight bearing. I don't know if you've seen a lot of these senior mm -hmm. programs. Sure. People are able to walk, but all of the exercises are being done in a chair. Yeah. And if you're sitting in a chair, not only are you shortening your hip flexors and probably straining your low back, but you're not strengthening your legs. So you're going to get weaker and weaker. It's inevitable. And that's what's the, usually the first thing to, you see with the seniors. You mentioned it earlier, is your ability to reach the cabinet, you like the, your flexibility, yeah. And then also your strength in your legs, getting down on the floor and then getting up. Right. I yeah, mean, well, it's the first thing you do. You sell the house with the stairs, right? So you get and you go a ranch floor. and now you're on flat. And, you you know, the, climbing them stairs is good for you. Sorry, you need to do that. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. It's one of those things. I know, but it, you know, it's, it's the thing. You live in a con if you live in a condo, you're not walking upstairs. Right. And you're, and, and, oh, it's and, all yeah. like elevators. It's and and you're that. getting on the elevator. So there's that yeah, balance. So take the stairs. You want people to keep walking. Walking is good for mm -hmm. the heart, but sometimes people think, I walk. Walking isn't enough for an older person to maintain their strength and to keep their bones. It does help a little bit with uh, osteoporosis oh, yeah. for women, but not enough um, because most times as you get older, your walking gets less. Now, some people, they say, oh, I walk a couple miles a day. That's different. But yeah. there are other people, oh, I walk around the block. Yeah. But yeah, a mile they, a day is not well, they that do the much. Ten, they do the, the 10,000 it. really steps, which much. is what, about five miles? I think a lot of people try to monitor the steps. I know that 10,000 yeah. steps yes, and that's, whatever it is. should be four or five miles, but... We Ready. Know. Okay, right. so your website, where is it? So our... www.gymguys.com. So our main website is www.gymguys.com. And then if you just, where it says location, type in a Hawaii zip code, you'll get us. And you'll get us, and awesome. everything is right there. Yes. And then Debbie will come over and give you an assessment. Deb will come over, send over Find the Find out what you got. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to ask for this for Christmas presents, so then we can do a quarterly update on see how... Oh. See how oh. Goyle progresses. See how, see how I progress. Because I do, I am starting to, te to go down the the hill so i got to get that fixed anyway awesome. we don't no guest goes unrewarded you get an autographed solo oh, cup cool. number 141 in the series wow i tell you there's are and these are bitcoin going up in value what do you see where these things go <laughs> 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 ain't gonna happen much anyway so thank you debbie it's great great seeing you again and i would like to have you come back and see how you know you know an to. entrepreneur you've you can give us an around. update on gordo <laughs> yeah, see what kind of a see what, what kind, kind of, of a guy he is make. yeah i mean yeah. give me a tank top Ooh. Anyway, <laughs> thank you for watching Hibachi Talk here on ThinkTech. And like we say at the end of every show, one, two, three. Hi, how you doing? Do